Today we'll be talking about tidy data. A lot of real data isn't very tidy, mostly because, you know, we're not taught how to structure our data in a way that is easy to analyze. For example, the way we enter data in the field is usually very different than how we should enter it into a spreadsheet program. So the main goal of tidy data is making it easy for a computer to work with that data. So let's start by looking at some messy data and think about what makes it messy and what we could do to uh, improve it. So what, we're downloading a messy version of the portal project data. The portal project is a long-term small mammal survey in Portal, Arizona. And note, you know, the first thing I see is that there are multiple tabs and that it's in uh, .xls and I don't have access to uh, Microsoft products right now because my laptop is, uh, you know, on the fritz. So I wouldn't be able to open this if I didn't have access to, uh, you know, Google Sheets or other open source uh, software. So let's think about what could be improved and there are a few best practices for keeping uh, data tidy. The first rule of tidy data is to be consistent. In the example data set we're looking at here, you can see there are two columns named weight and one has the units contained within the cell and the other does not. So we would want to standardize, you know. Uh, the next rule of thumb is to make your data into a rectangle. This is the, what we're looking at is not a rectangle. It's not even three self-contained rectangles because of this species header and there's this information here about the field season. It's important that each row contains a single observation or a single data point. So in this example, a row contains information for, you know, three different species on different dates. And this is, um, it's, it's going to be a, a nearly impossible to analyze this data in a program like R. So R can't understand uh, data contained in this format. So to improve this, again, we want to keep data in that rectangular block structure with a single row for each observation. So one row, one observation. So now we've created uh, the species as a separate column. And so each row is a single uh, collection, right? So this is some small mammal that was collected on this date and it has these attributes. We also want to keep um, one row for each uh, data point. So in, in this example, a row contains information for three different species on three different dates. Um, again, we want to contain one row for each data point. And we want one column per type of information. In this example, uh, column C actually has one, two, three types of uh, different data, right? One data is, is the field season, the other is the species, the date collected, and uh, it's, what a mess. Mm -hmm. So um, again, in the weight column, we the column actually has two pieces of information, the value and the unit. So one way we could uh, improve this and make this more tidy is to move the unit to the column header itself. When we use this rectangular block structure, 
right now we've got the unit of grams in the column header. We have the species as its own column. All the, the values are numerical, so we're being consistent. And we've added this notes for anything that we want to uh, comment on. Another rule of thumb is to avoid using color or fonts or anything visual as data. So you can't see it here because I accidentally cut it off. But if you looked at those different tabs, you'll see this one tab has gray cells, which um, means something, right? Gray cells means the measurement device wasn't calibrated correctly. And what's problematic about that is that a computer isn't able to interpret style components the same way that a human can. So instead, it's better to put that information in the notes column. We also want to use good null values. For example, some federal agencies use a value like negative 9,999 to indicate that this is a null. But this is problematic if there are instances where that value itself could be confused with a real value. In this course, we'll use NA because that is the, that is the default null value in R. So R interprets NA uh, as a null value. But it's good to know that other programs uh, may not recognize NA by default. And you may have to specify what that null value is. For example, NA could be interpreted as North America in some contexts. So instead of these null values, these empty spaces, we don't know, you know, what happened there? Was it not measured? Uh, did it escape? Uh, was the scale not working at that time? Um, so instead, we want to fill in those empty cells if they're true null values as NA. And for an extra layer of protection, if you really want to uh, be uh, you know, very clear in your data, you can add that NA uh, indicates no value in that notes column. A major issue when working with Excel that you'll have read about from this week's uh, material are dates. Dates in Excel are infamous for being problematic, particularly with changing gene names to dates. So instead of using this date format, which okay, forget about um, changing the names of genes to dates, it, you know, this format varies depending on what country you're from. So sometimes the month is, just, is entered first and sometimes it's the day. So that can be confusing if you had a day less than 12, right? You wouldn't know which, which uh, entry was the day or the, the month. So instead, we want to use a more universal format. And if you want to specify this in your column header, that's, a, you know, even a better um, practice. So universal format is something like, you know, year, month, day. And sometimes for plotting, it's easier to pull out the year in its own column. Uh, but once you have your dates in this format, it's easy in R to pull out the first four numerical values. Other best practices include using good naming system. So this is just as important for your data as it is for your files. So think of your future self. You're not going to remember what variable one or variable two is. So use a naming structure that is more descriptive, but also still concise. And it's also recommended that files be saved in plain text files, so .txt or .csv. In this course, we'll often use .csv because these formats are non-proprietary. So what that means is, you know, at .xls, that's an Excel 
specific format. And if you don't have Excel, then you can't open that file without an open source software like uh, Google Sheets that can translate .xls into this open, into this text format. And you may be working with collaborators that don't have access to Excel. So, uh, and one day Excel may go extinct. So for your data longevity and ability to collaborate, it's always better to hand off your data as .text or .csv. I mostly work with .csv, but if you're in the uh, biomedical or genetic uh, fields, then this is, um, more common because of some of the, the ways that uh, gene sequencing works. Um, let's see. Okay, so we've covered the key principles of tidy data. Now it's your turn to think about how you would improve these data in the first exercise. And in the next video, we'll talk about data entry and some tricks that you can do to prevent human error.